What's shaking booktube? My name's Cam and welcome back to another video. I want to say straight away before I get into it that this video is going to feel a bit different to my usual ones because it's not going to be as, well I'm still going to try to be as entertaining as possible, but there's not going to be as many uh, jokes and wacky editing. <laughs> there won't be as much tomfoolery, not, not as much shenanigans. We're going to, we're going to put a, a stop to that right now starting right now and dismissing all of that bit just then the reason for that is because today i'm going to be having a chat it's going to be a review but it's also a bit of a chat about a book series and it's a book series that deals with some pretty dark historical fiction that's rooted in some very real stuff that happened and that happened to people or at least ancestors of people that are still alive today but when i say ancestors i mean like children of the people that this happened to. You'll understand what I mean in just a minute. Today I'm talking about a book series written by the fantastic Morris Gleitzman, an author I'm sure you're more than familiar with. He's, he's written a very long catalogue of books for almost every age group, and this particular series was aimed at children, well, specifically very young teens. I would say late primary school age children. The series is the Felix and Zelda series. Some people call it the Once series. There's no definitive name for the series that I know of. It's also pretty tricky to know the order that these books go in, so I'm going to tell you right now. The books that I read are Once, Then, Now, After, Soon, and Maybe. I don't know where I put my copy of Maybe, but that was the last one I read, so I probably left it at work. Anyway, the book Now, the third one in the series, chronologically that one would actually come towards the end, but I feel like it's best to leave it where it is because it does set the tone a bit for the books to come. But in the timeline of the story itself, the the events of now do take place long after the events of the rest of the books. So what is it? This series is about a plucky, optimistic child named Felix as he travels through Nazi-occupied Poland on a journey basically to survive, but more specifically in the hopes of finding his parents. There's quite a lot of books and in most instances it feels like the story can be finished with each book. I know that Morris has pointed out that he tried to write these books so that they could be read in any order. To be honest, I feel like you do have to read them in order and as a series as a whole to really understand it and appreciate it for what it is. Technically, yeah, you could kind of pick up any one of these books and still get a story out of it without being too confused. Again, though, that does kind of rely on you knowing at least a bit about what happened during the events of World War II. So as you might have guessed from the title of the video, it actually took me a really, really long time to finish this series, and that's a bit weird because all of the books are incredibly short. I mean, if you squashed all of these books together, they would probably be about the size of one epic fantasy book. In fact, I think I have a, I can do a comparison for you right now. So I have here Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James, and the first four books in the Felix and Zelda series, and if you, if you put them side by side, they're basically the same size. I think part of the reason it took me so long is because of the heavy subject matter and because of how emotionally draining stories about World War II can be when you take a moment to appreciate that these things actually happened to real people. It can be a bit rough sometimes, but I'd be lying if I said that was the only reason. I think I just forgot about it from time to time. I did a review on the first book in this series quite a long time ago, like two years ago now, and that one actually ended up getting quite a lot of views, I think primarily from kids who were being made to read this in school and from a lot of parents as well. And one question I got from a lot of those parents was, is this series appropriate for my child to read? And I want to take a quick moment to have a chat about that. It'll only take like a minute or two, but if you're not interested in that and just want to go straight to the pros and cons of this series, I'll leave a time card right here. You can just skip to that time. Is this series appropriate for kids? I would say, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, this series is appropriate for kids. And in fact, I would actually encourage you to have your kids read this series. But there is one caveat to that, and that is that I would break up the reading of this series uh, after every book or maybe every two books, I would recommend having your child read a bit of a lighter read, maybe a comedy or something a bit more fun, <laughs> maybe from someone like uh, Paul Jennings or something like that. Because at times this series is unapologetically honest and brutal with some of the atrocities that did happen, and that's obviously a lot for a child to take in. I think it's very important for a child to take in, and it's written in a way that, well, the best possible way that it could be written to be appropriate for children that age, but it is still heavy. There's no way of talking about those things without it being heavy. So just split up the reads with a light read here and there. That's all I would say. Felix is introduced to a ton of characters through this series, and a lot of them 
do die. I, I don't really see that as a spoiler when you're talking about something like World War II, but a lot of characters that you do become emotionally attached to do die, and they die in some pretty terrible ways. And while it's not explicitly gory or anything like that, it still does create a real atmosphere of grief there. You're, you're reading about a child dealing with these things, so... Just, just know that going into it. I do want to reiterate, though, that I think it's really important to have children read this book series because, like I said, it, it is told in the best possible way it could be told for an age range like that because it's told through the eyes of Felix, who is an endlessly optimistic character. Felix is a really great character, and you see him grow in great strides through this series, and he is almost always approaching everything optimistically, which is, while it's pretty unrealistic in a time period like that, it is very comforting and at times very educational and I think would instill some great morals for kids reading that who are going through the big change in their life. Not only is this series a really great and easy, well as easy as it can be, way to consume the events of World War II honestly, it also does it appropriately and also provides lesson in compassion grief and keeping hope in what can literally be the absolute worst times that a human being could go through. So yeah, it's appropriate for kids. I would encourage it for kids. So let's actually talk about some of the pros and cons that happened during this story. Like I said, it's a historical fiction based in the early days of the Nazi occupation of Poland. Through the series, it takes you through a lot of the real life events that happened, finishes up with the basically the end of the war and takes you a little bit through the aftermath of that too because obviously once the war ended everything wasn't just flowers and sunshine there was still a lot of hard work that needed to be done and there was still a lot of terrible people doing things and taking advantage of the ruin of world war ii so the series explores that and i think that was really fantastic because well at first i was surprised because when you're telling a story like this for kids you wouldn't expect it to add on stuff like that but it but morris did and it worked the biggest pro this story has going for it is the characters more specifically felix this series would not work without a character like felix his optimism and his hope make it that much easier to get through the events of this story and, and do leave you with some questions for yourself and how you approach certain dark events in your own life and, and the big questions of, you know, do you remain hopeful? Do you keep trying to show compassion even after terrible things have happened to you? You can't help but compare some of the stuff that you're concerned about in your life right now to some of the stuff that these people are going through and in the end it just seems so small and I think that's really important. I think perspective is very important. That's not to say that your issues, although obviously a lot smaller than that of the Holocaust, that's not to say that your issues aren't important or you don't have a right to be stressed or concerned about them, but perspective is still very important when you when you think about stuff like this. Is the thing that you're worried about right now something that you're going to be worried about next year? When you realize it isn't, just feels a bit better. But yeah, the character of Felix, absolutely fantastic, and I really like how although you don't see a whole lot of change in him for the first couple of books. Towards the end, towards the latter of the series, you see an enormous change in him. You see him actually learning from the events that he's put through and the terrible, terrible tragedies he has to witness. So through the series, Felix meets an enormous cast of characters as well, all of, all of these side characters that are either an obstacle for him and his journey to find his parents or that help him in either trying to find his way to find his parents or in just helping him to survive. The Nazi military as a whole are used pretty much just as an obstacle for Felix, which is natural in a story about World War II, but all of the characters that it hones in on a little bit are all pretty fleshed out and three-dimensional, even if you only get them for a short amount of time. And it's done in a really, really fantastic way because a lot of people think that even if you have a character for a short amount of time, the way to get readers invested in them is to give their life story, and that's just not true. It's just going to frustrate the reader if they have to read the life story about a character that's just going to be gone in a couple of pages. Morris went the opposite way and got us connected to these side characters that we spent a little bit of time with by creating real personality and motive for them through their dialogue and through the actions they take and through the risks that they take especially, because in almost every instance in this series, the choices you make are life or death. But the thing I love the most, the thing I love the most about this entire series and about the character development in general is that it is never black or white. It's never just good and evil because when people look back on World War II, it's just the good guys and the Nazis. And obviously the Nazis were 
They were terrible. The things that the Nazis did during World War II are never going to be forgotten because that is almost the peak of cruelty and evil in the modern world. Obviously not talking about the Crusades in the ancient world, I'm talking about the modern world. It's almost insane to think that World War II and the stuff that happened in World War II, like, you know, the burning of the Jews, that kind of stuff, it's just crazy to think that that happened not that long ago. Like, really, it was only basically a couple of generations ago. That's really insane. Like, just imagine in this day and age, a whole group of people being rounded up and quite literally burnt alive for being who they are. And I know you could quite easily make comparisons to stuff that's going on in the real world, but I'm talking about literally rounding up on a major national scale a group of people and murdering them. Anyway, I deviated a bit there. Um, what I was saying before, the best part about this series, the best part about the characters, is that it's never just good and evil. We're, we're given a bit of insight, and it's never done in a way to make us feel sorry for the Nazis, but it does show us that there were people indoctrinated into the Nazi regime, or there were people who believed in the Nazi regime when it began, but later became remorseful when they saw what was happening and what was becoming of it, and the extremes that this regime was willing to go to. And on the flip side of that, we also have people that help Felix and want to keep him safe, but also do terrible, terrible and selfish things, because like I said before, it's usually life or death. And in the perfect story, the hero is morally unquestionable. Well, I mean, obviously you would want the hero to be flawed, but you get what I'm saying. Basically, morals are pretty easy to understand when it comes to a fantasy story about a hero. But when you're talking about World War II, it's a lot more complex in order to survive, in order to live, and living is something that people want to do a lot more than they do in these fantastical stories. You just have to do terrible things, and there are a lot of good characters that do terrible things. There's a lot of characters that are introduced as bad, that do bad things, but with an extreme sense of remorse. Morris also touched on a lot of things that aren't always delved into when it comes to uh, historical fiction during World War II, which was really interesting when you're talking about it in the sense of a children's series. An example I could give you is the Nazi youth. That's just something not many people even know about at all. It's not something that's explored a whole lot, but children as young as, you know, I think it went down to like seven years old to like 10 years old, kids that were literally being dressed up and given guns and told to go out and kill people. There's a whole section in one of the books where it explores that. That's pretty much all the pros paired with what I was saying before about this story providing a real, even for adults, a real kind of educational approach to the stuff that happened and also some stuff you can reflect on in your own life as far as, you know, approaching grief and terrible stuff with a sense of hope and optimism. Even if it's difficult for you to read about these things that happened, I still think it's important. I think if anything, that's the reason why it's important. I think we should be confronting difficult and uncomfortable stuff like what happened so that it doesn't happen again. So as far as cons go, it's it's obviously difficult to pull stuff out of a historical fiction label it a con because most of it actually happened. I guess if I was to say anything, uh, reading from the view of a child as an adult is obviously in a lot of cases extremely frustrating because Felix is, in a lot of cases, extremely naive. That optimism I mentioned gets him into a lot of trouble and at a lot of times you're like thinking to yourself, kid, what are you doing? I think that we know that that's naivety actually doubles the impact of some of the sad parts and makes it even more tragic because we know of how easily it could have been avoided if Felix had been a bit more smart in that situation. But even with that con, I don't think I would want that taken out of the story because it's important. It, it's through the eyes of a child and children, especially children this optimistic, are naive. It's it's just honest. I guess also some moments were a bit too sweet and were obviously done for the benefit of the younger readers, like certain times when a hero swoops in and saves them at the last instant. Just a couple of things that, you know, wouldn't have happened in any sense realistically, but were obviously done to alleviate some of the darker moments. But again, I think those were kind of important so they don't bum the kids out too much that are reading this. That's really all I have to say on, on this series as a whole. It was absolutely fantastic. I'm really happy I finally finished it. It took me way too long. I could have finished this years ago, but I'm, I'm glad I finally did. I really do feel like I learned a lot from reading this series. I think Morris Gleitzman has done a fantastic job. Absolutely fantastic job. Well, I haven't read a lot of World War II stuff focused towards a young audience, but I cannot imagine a better example of something that would educate kids on World War II and stuff that happened. Even though it's fiction, it's still 
very rooted in real occurrences. It talks about and takes Felix through stuff that really happened. And I just think it was done in the best way possible. If I could give this series as a whole a star rating, I would give it a uh, five out of five stars of David. <laughs> I laughed, I cried, I, I actually did tear up at a lot of moments, just not so much about what was happen happening in the story fictionally, but just kind of coming to terms with people actually went through some of this stuff. It was just a bit much sometimes, but it was great. I really appreciated the experience. If you've read this, let me know what you thought in the comments below or recommend me any other World War II historical fiction if you'd like. Aside from The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, I've already been recommended that one a billion times. And as always, I'll see you in the next video. Catch up.